Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is about carpal tunnel syndrome. So let's start with, what is carpal tunnel? In the human body, the carpal tunnel or carpal canal is the passageway on the palmar side of the wrist that connects the forearm to the hand. The tunnel is bounded by the bones of the wrist and flexor retinaculum from connective tissue. Normally several tendons from the flexor group of forearm muscles and the median nerve pass through it. The flexor retinaculum protects nine of the forearm flexor tendons and median nerve as they pass through the carpal tunnel. If this tissue becomes inflamed, swollen, or fibrotic, the median nerve can become irritated or compressed, leading to the formation of a carpal tunnel syndrome. This is very common in repetitive motion injuries such as those experienced by computer operators, secretaries, and factory jobs that many repetitive motions of the wrist. Diseases such as diabetes mellitus can narrow the carpal tunnel, causing the formation of a carpal tunnel syndrome, which can be quite painful. Let me give some context on what are carpal bones. The carpal bones are bones of the wrist that connect the distal aspects of the radial and ulnar bones of the forearm to the bases of the five metacarpal bones of the hand. There are eight carpal bones, which divide into two rows, a proximal row and a distal row. The proximal row of carpal bones, moving from radial to ulna, are the scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and pisiform, while the distal row of carpal bones, also from radial to ulna, comprises the trapezium, trapezoid, capitati, and hamet. The carpal bones that make up the wrist form an arch which is convex on the dorsal side of the hand and concave on the palmar side. The groove on the palmar side, the sulcus carpi, is covered by the flexor retinaculum, a sheath of tough connective tissue, thus forming the carpal tunnel. On the side of the radius, the flexor retinaculum is attached to the scaphoid bone, more precisely its tubercle as well as the ridge of trapezium. On the ulnar side, it is attached to the pisiform and hook of hamet. What are the structures and functions of carpal tunnel? Ten structures pass through the carpal tunnel, most of them flexor tendons, not the muscles themselves. Flexor digitorum profundus, four tendons. Flexor digitorum superficialis, four tendons. Flexor pollicis longus, one tendon. Median nerve between tendons of flexor digitorum profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis. Why is it so much important to read about carpal tunnel? To understand the carpal tunnel syndrome. Guys, this is very important for FMG examination, so grab your book and pen and start writing. Carpal tunnel syndrome, CTS is the collection of symptoms and signs associated with median neuropathy at the carpal tunnel. Most CTS is related to idiopathic compression of the median nerve as it travels through the wrist at the carpal tunnel. Idiopathic means that there is no other disease process contributing to pressure on the nerve. As with most structural issues, it occurs in both hands, and the strongest risk factor is genetics. Other conditions can cause CTS such as wrist fracture or rheumatoid arthritis. After fracture, swelling, bleeding, and deformity compress the median nerve. With rheumatoid arthritis, the enlarged synovial lining of the tendons causes compression. The main symptoms are numbness and tingling in the thumb, index finger, middle finger, and the thumb side of the ring finger. Why do we get numbness and tingling sensation in thumb, index finger, middle finger, and the thumb side of the ring finger? The median nerve is a nerve in humans in the upper limb. It is one of the five main nerves originating from the brachial plexus. The median nerve originates from the lateral and medial cords of the brachial plexus, 1, and has contributions from ventral roots of C5, C7, lateral cord, and C8 and T1, medial cord, dot, 1, 2. The median nerve is the only nerve that passes through the carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel syndrome is the disability that results from the median nerve being pressed in the carpal tunnel. 
Innervations of concern in case of CTS. The median nerve innervates the skin of the palmar, vola, side of the index finger, thumb, middle finger, and half the ring finger, and the nail bed. The radial aspect of the palm is supplied by the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve, which leaves the nerve proximal to the wrist creases. This palmar cutaneous branch travels in a separate fascial groove adjacent to the flexor carpi radialis, and then superficial to the flexor retinaculum. It is, therefore, spared in carpal tunnel syndrome. Injury to median nerve can occur at any level, may be at arm, may be at forearm, but in order to get carpal tunnel syndrome, you need median nerve injured within the wrist. Common mechanism, carpal tunnel syndrome, an injury by compression in the carpal tunnel, without transection of the median nerve, due to overuse by activities such as keyboard typing and cooking. Motor deficit. Weakness in flexion of radial half of digits and thumb, weakness in abduction and opposition of thumb. Presence of an ape hand deformity or when attempting to form a fist, the benediction sign, due to compression of the median nerve, as opposed to complete median nerve palsy. Sensory deficit, numbness and tingling in lateral 3 plus 1 2 digits including their nail beds but excluding the thena eminence which is supplied by the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve. Unlike in wrist laceration, sensation still occurs in the area of the central palm. Sensation is not lost because the palmar cutaneous branch runs above the flexor retinaculum, and is not affected in compression in carpal tunnel syndrome. Question for you guys. The carpal tunnel contains all of the following important structures except a median nerve, b flexor pollicis longus, c flexor carpi radialis, d flexor digitorum superficialis. Answer this question and provide answer in my comment section below. Thank you for watching.